I'm Zitali and in this video I'll be drawing or sketching out a, a Eastern style dragon or Eastern inspired dragon or long drake or noodle dragon whatever you like to call it. It's been a little while since I've done one of these videos so hopefully I can get back into the swing of it but essentially what I'll be doing here is sketching out a design for a noodle dragon and then once the design is finished I will then continue on to doing a sketch of the dragon in a pose and a background. If you'd like to see how I get to the point of designing dragons and what my thought processes are before that you can have a look at the earlier or the first video in this series uh, which is for the why then. So the start of that video does talk about what kind of thought process I have before starting a sketch. Now as with my uh, other videos this is being recorded in real time so I am speaking as I'm drawing so it will be at normal speed which means it will be quite a long video as I won't be changing the speed of the video at all uh, and I'll just be talking as I draw. So there are going to be long moments of silence as sometimes I do forget to talk about what I'm sketching as I'm sketching it but I will try to keep that in mind and let you know, you know what I'm, why I'm doing certain things as I do it. So let's get started. So I'm just going to choose a pen or pencil to sketch with. Normally I would use a pencil, um, but I have taken to just using the bamboo pen for pretty much everything. So I'm actually going to use this one uh, for this sketch as well. And I just like to turn this little incremental thing um, off so that it, uh, there's, a, there's a pen pressure dictates how much opacity the pen has rather than having it on which means it's just a solid line. If you were doing line art you probably want this on so that you don't have different opacity in your line art uh, and it's just one solid thing but because I'm sketching I like to have it more like this. So the first thing to think about when designing your long drake or your little worm or your eastern dragon is really how long is it going to be because you need to plan out the space on your page for these dragons as they can be enormously long you need to be thinking about that first uh, and to get the general flow of the dragon from head to tail so to start with I'm just going to use I'm just going to draw a little circle for its head I'm just going to I've got black hold on let me just change this grace Let's change this to a different color and I'm just going to turn down the opacity a tiny bit. So we're probably going to have the head about here um, and then I'm just going to draw a line that'll be its neck. Its chest is probably going to be here so I'm going to put another circle where its chest will be. I want it to have a long arcing back and I'll put another circle where its legs would be and then its tail. Now I've already run out of room for my tail so this is why we plan. So I'm just going to shrink this down a little bit by using the select or transform option. Um, I think I want it a bit taller. So it will be like this. And I love massively long tails. So that's why I've left nearly half the page for tail space. Mm. There we go. So basically I just want to get a nice flow for how the dragon goes from head to tail because a lot of the time these dragons are drawn as either dragons swimming through water or swimming through the sky as opposed to flying with wings. So it is important that they have a body that could flow with the air currents or water currents. So it is a good idea to think about the flow of the dragon for these particular types of dragons. I'm actually going to move this down to a second layer. So I'm just going to turn the opacity down and create a new layer above it as I just want this here as my guide and then I'll be sketching the actual parts of the dragon. And I'm actually going to start with the chest area. And now you can 
You can do a lot of different things with these kinds of dragons. Some of them are literally just a tube with like chicken legs coming off the side. And some of them have more defined chest and hips area, which is the type I prefer to go towards. If you're looking for references as to help you design these kinds of dragons, for areas like necks, you could look at birds with long necks like swans and um, maybe cranes or antelopes with long necks i like to look at antelopes for how uh for thicker necks so for where the head joins onto the neck i like looking at references for that um, with antelope and those types of animals as well as how the neck joins onto the chest as i do have a larger chest area you could also look at things like snakes or lizards especially for legs looking at uh, if you want one you know if they're going to be close to the ground you probably want to look at crocodiles or lizards but if you do want them to stand upright you could look at big cats again like with most dragons they're good references for muscular sort of arms and legs or you can look at birds if you if you want to go more the chicken leg or a thinner sort of dragon leg look i'm going to start with the chest area of this dragon um, so we're just going to zoom in a little bit, make sure we're in the correct layer. And then I'm just going to be sketching out the sort of shape I want the chest area to be. So that I have a good base for the neck and the rest of the body to come off. Um, so I'm just going to sort of, you know, <laughs> draw a chest, <laughs> which is sort of like this blocky. I guess you could imagine it with ribs like this if you want to and this would be where the arms would attach so just this sort of shape here and then I'm going to start heading from the chest to the neck so I always like having this defined collarbone section so this these lines here I like having quite separate from the neck so you'll see that I have the um, neck sort of coming off a little bit higher so you can see it's different from this section of the dragon and maybe there'd be some like fold marks from where the neck bends in this section and I'm just going to follow the curve that I created earlier all the way up here where the head is going to be There are different options on how to connect the neck to the head. Uh, if you've watched my previous videos, you may know that um, I don't, I don't particularly like the completely smooth connection, like just connecting it like this. I do like to have uh, the sort of the neck coming down a bit and being a bit thicker where it, it joins onto the head. But essentially, it'll be joining onto the back of the skull here. So I'll just sketch out the head first and then I'll fix the neck afterwards. So um, I want a sort of angular head. So I'm going to use block shapes. And, and I'm going to make the cheeks a bit bigger. And I'm just going back and forth between the eraser and the pen tool as I'm doing this. head something like this and then I like having sort of the throat come down from underneath the jaw and joining onto the neck I guess a bit like a pelican but not as extreme now this neck has ended up a little bit thin so I'm just gonna make this chest area a bit bigger so that I can make the neck a bit thicker And then from the back of the chest area, I'm now going to continue on the rest of the body's journey. Now, I do always struggle with this portion uh, of Eastern Dragons, because again, I like having a little bit of definition for where the legs join onto the body, but I do struggle with that a bit more uh, on with hips. I just don't really have enough understanding to know how to make this part look good 
so for the most part I just sort of draw like another block here this is a block <laughs> and then the tail will start to taper so it will start to be smaller than the body from this point and then it just flows my amazing curve drawing skills I will definitely be using the stabilizer or lazy brush later on to get these uh, curvy lines nice and smooth so I've got the head chest and the rest of the body shapes down I'm just gonna add on some limbs so I'm just gonna add the front limbs here now I kind of like to go sort of a, a combination between I guess like a musk more muscular and thinner legged dragon um, so I would be referencing like big cats and maybe large birds like emus or cassowaries for the shape here. Um, the shoulder I would definitely more reference uh, large cats or maybe even large dogs. So just going forward for the shape of the shoulder and then back as it goes into the top part of the arm. Um, and then you'd have elbow here around here. And then I thin it out quite considerably. This is sort of where it goes more into like, I guess the chicken leg or bird leg portion. And I've run out of room again. So I don't really need this bottom layer anymore. So we're gonna delete that. And I'm just gonna shift this up. So I can finish my legs. back legs too. Now the dreaded uh, legs attached to hip. This is, you're going to watch me struggle for a little bit as I try to figure this part out. I think this is too high. I think I need to lower this part of the dragon. I'm just drawing, if i having trouble drawing something on a picture, I'll quite often draw it to the side and then either use the select tool like I just did there to add it onto the dragon or just use it as a reference so I know how I should be drawing things. But I actually don't like this at all, so I'm actually just going to delete it. <laughs> but yeah, if you are having trouble drawing something on a picture, especially if it's a messy sketch, like this is super messy. Um, it might be difficult to see what you're trying to sketch there. So either tidy it up like I'm doing now, or as I mentioned, just draw it to the side so you have a bit more room to experiment with it. And then you can just uh, add it on later. Or if you are drawing in real media, you can just use it as reference. So maybe draw it on a scrap of paper or something like that. So you're freer to, to sort of use it as a reference picture rather than the actual you know, be stuck with a random leg next to your art piece. I'm making a real mess. <laughs> Alright. I'm moving where this tail is attached.
stone loose, but it's not quite in the right position still. Now I think it's too low. <laughs> Ah, the beauty of digital art. There we go. Yeah, that'll do. <laughs> I've lost the tail a little bit, but that's okay. We can fix that too. I'm going to make this whole thing smaller again so I have more room for my massive tail. And I don't like how long the body has gotten so I'm just going to... I'm just going to move this over here for now. <laughs> Let's just have the legs just over here on their own whilst I sort out what's going on over here. There we go. Alright, um, now I'm going to detail this sketch a bit more. So I'm going to create another layer above it and turn this one down and we'll start adding a few details to it. So let's start with the head because the head is fun. You have lots of, lots of options. I mean you have lots of options with any of your dragons really. Um, but Eastern dragons tend to have a lot of variation in their horns. You can have like antler horns or just you know normal spiky horns. They can have a spiky frill all the way down their spine or it can be hair. They can be hairy themselves or they can be covered in scales. So you actually have a bunch of different options you can choose from. But at the end of the day, dragons are fantasy creatures. So you can do it whatever way you like. If you're going through a certain aesthetic, then you may want to look up, you know, what the traditional creatures looked like. But if you're just designing your own dragon and you just want it to be something that you enjoy, then just pick items that you like. Like if you like a specific type of horn, put that kind of horn on your dragon. If you have a favorite color, make that color your the color of your dragon. It doesn't. There's not really any right or wrong in how to design dragons. This is just a guide on like how I would do it if I did have a specific sort of shape in mind. So I'm going to start with the horns because I like starting with the horns. So I'm just going to follow the shape of this dragon and uh, we'll give it sort of spiky horns. I'm going to give it like this jewel spiked horns. And they're going to have these sort of scales going all the way up them. And they're going to lead, they're going to follow the shape of the dragon into basically the dragon's brow. And this is with eyes. <laughs> and we've got the nose coming down here. Now a lot of Eastern Dragons do have whiskers and I do kind of like 
whiskers like catfish whiskers so I think we'll add some on here but I'll add them on after I've decided on the shape of the dragon and I'll be using the lazy brush option or stabilizing brush because they are difficult to draw uh, a smooth line that's uh, flowing from the nose. I just have trouble doing it because I have unsteady hands. I think should we give this guy a big frill yeah I like this I want it sort of to feel like a fast moving dragon so this one's gonna have a frill so it's got uh, sort of three on its head so it'll have a center frill down the middle of its head like this and then it's got two going like that either side and the horns the horns are here <laughs> my amazing picture of eyes like that I might give him a frill beard yeah I like it there we go let's make these eyes more like eyes I'm going to give it larger sort of nostrils because I want it to sort of feel like an aquatic dragon. So I'm going to give it like, you know, crocodiles have their noses right right on the top. So I'm going to, we're going to make this nose a bit bigger. Maybe like that. Now, I should probably start thinking about what kind of scales this thing has. If it has belly plates or if it's it's not going to be this one's not going to be furry because I've gone with a sort of sea spiky fin thing I don't think it would make sense for it to be furry so I'm not going to make it furry uh, but let's get this neck in here properly there we go so with these kinds of dragon scales there are lots of options as with any dragon um, I if you want to sort of look up um, the, I guess, the more traditional ones are these large overlapping scales that kind of go like this, um, which is kind of like fish scales or snake scales. So if you want to look up references, then especially like snakes, because they are already a tube, tube shape, uh, they would be a good reference for how scales flow along a, a tube especially since they have the belly scales as well um, but fish scales might be a good reference because they come in I don't know I just like the iridescence that fish can have sometimes might give you some inspiration for your color choices as well uh, for this one I will attempt to do the fish or overlapping scales all the way along so I'm just gonna draw in some rough guidelines here so I know where my scales are going maybe I should do the scales another layer mm, we'll see how we go so I'm just going to do a couple on the face just so you get the impression that it's fully scaled but I'm not going to draw them all besides some of them would get rather small
This one needs to be a bit bigger. Fatten it up. Now during scales along a tube can be quite challenging. You can do like a crisscross pattern like this to use as a guide. Um, I do that sometimes, but I'm not very good with straight lines. So a lot of the time I just kind of do what I'm doing up here, which is I just sort of go for it and then fix up my horrible glaring mistakes later. So I'm just sort of like uh, overlapping these scales like this at the moment. So they are all overlapping each other. And I get into trouble when I find a bend. I'm just going to try and make these scales get smaller as they head into the belly. This is already really messy. <laughs> So what I'm doing here is trying to make sure that the start of the next scale is coming from the center of the end of the one before it. So you end up with like, like this sort of thing. Some of my scales lack definition. So scales uh, and now we're gonna continue this frill now I like to have like I don't I like to have variation in the length of frills so I like having it longer at the back of the head and then making it become smaller as it comes down the neck especially around the shoulders and where the neck joins joins the um, where the shoulder blades are because because these dragons have very long necks and very arching backs, I often find if you have long spikes or anything down here, they end up clashing into each other as the dragon would move. So it makes sense for things to get smaller as they reach these areas where there's actually less room for them to fold and move around. So, And then when I get towards the back again, I like making them huge again. And then I sort of make them small as they follow the tail and then maybe the tail will have like a massive fin or something. All right, so let's just quickly get this arm or front leg in here. We've got our chest. Little elbow.
I like dragons with great big long claws for latching onto things and I feel like if this dragon is a fishing dragon it should have long sharp claws. going on with that foot. Yeah, you get the idea. It's just a sketch. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's just so I know what I'm doing when I'm drawing the rest, when I do an actual sketch for it. And I'm going to give it back of the arm frills because they're fun. Now the dreaded back leg. I like showing that there are ribs here, that it's not just a, a long noodle, I guess. Um, it has organs in here somewhere, so it needs, it needs a rib cage to protect said organs. I think it's time for the stabilizer brush. There you go. It's not perfect, but you know, it's better than if I hadn't used the stabilizer. I do think bird legs are pretty good reference for Asian dragon legs. They've got those nice plates across the legs, which are pretty good reference for this kind of thing. So I do recommend if you do want like more Asian-y looking dragon, then um, have a look at some bird legs.
don't comment on my amazing scale work on the tail. It is perfect. No one can argue the perfectness of these scales. Okay, cool. Alright, well, this is my Asian dragon design. So this is what I'm going to use as my design for the dragon. Oh, wait, I've got to add the back leg fins. There we go. Cool. Uh, so this is what I'll use um, as my sketch uh, design. So, so when I do the sketch, I'll use this as reference. I almost forgot whiskers. Okay, I'll just quickly add some whiskers. I'm not going to have huge ones. Ugh, I need more help with my line than that. Uh, it's lazy. It's sometimes too controlling. So he has four whiskers. Like that. Yay! Dragon. Alright, let's move him to the side. Oh, her. Could be a girl. Who knows? That's my little reference. And uh, now we're going to start thinking of some ideas. I'm just going to make this a bit. Now the best, the best thing to do with these dragons is make them moving quickly or sliding, slivering, moving around fast because they've got beautiful flowing bodies and it's just kind of fun to do this. So I want to do something like that. So I think I had an idea in mind. I'm not sure if I can draw it, but I'm going to give it a go. I kind of want to... This is its head. <laughs> I kind of want to have it like zooming above the water. Go away for a second. So like... Hmm. I don't think I can get it right. All right, new plan. It's going to be swimming. So seeing this dragon from above. So it's like looking down on it as it swims through a lake or something full of lily pads.
So this is going to be a bit confusing to see what's going on without colour because I've got these horns here and then the fins going around them. Uh, it's a bit muddy to sort of see what's going on. If you're having difficulty defining your own sketch and you can't really see what's going on, then you might want to use different colours to sort of define you know, if you, you want to just draw the shape of the head and then do the horns in a different colour and then the fins in a different colour so you know what's going on. Um, I can usually figure out what my drawings are doing without needing to do that. But, you know, if you do, it does help if you are having trouble figuring it out on, you know, without. Um, because, yeah, I could tell if someone else looked at this picture, they'd have no idea what part is of this dragon is what like this this bit here is just a mass of lines but I know this is the back fin here and this is the middle fin and that's the one behind it and I've got my horn so I know what's going on but you know if you're having trouble then just use different colors This is where it goes into the water. He looks a little cranky. This is where it's coming out of the water again. These are the shoulders here. And uh, when I render this or color it, I would make it so you could see like this portion here is actually underneath the water. So I'm just putting like light lines so you can sort of see that it's under the water there um, but obviously when I color it it will be less it will be dulled out by the water I don't need this anymore and I kind of have this like idea that this this lake or whatever it's for me in is completely covered in greenery so as it goes through it it cuts that cuts a black line or a dark line through the all the plants that are on the surface so uh, there'd be lots lots of plants I c I'm not going to sketch all the plants but that's the idea I have It'd be like little bits coming off here So it have some larger water lilies, but most of it's, this is all perspective up here is all wrong. So I'm just going to cover that. But, um, yeah, generally with uh, this kind of thing, like um, I would not bother sketching the lily pads or the pond scum or whatever you want to call it. Cause the, the, they're going to be like tiny, they're going to be like, whoops, that's the select tool. They're going to be like, like this sort of size and like lots of them. So I would just use a brush to do that uh, rather than drawing them individually. So like some kind of scatter brush, you know, like this, but more solid. But green. That's the idea for this sketch. But yeah, the perspective on this is a bit whack. Let's see if we can fix it a bit.
Maybe that's better. That's better. And you'd have a reflection here underneath the dragon's raised neck. And I just want this whole screen to be full of this stuff. Like, I don't want you to be able to see the horizon line. This is all going to be water stuff. Anyway, that's my sketch. And I kind of really like it. So, it it's not what I had in mind, but I still think it's got potential. And I think it would be a fun thing to, to colour. Um, so, if you would like to see me color this picture then just let me know in the comments below um, hopefully this was helpful um, I'm not sure how helpful this series has been it's probably the last one I'll do like this I think perhaps it'd be more helpful if I drew simpler pictures and taught people how to draw a specific picture rather than just talked about how I sketch if you'd like to see that then just let me know um, but otherwise thanks everybody for watching um, if you enjoyed the video don't forget to give it a like if you'd like to see more from me, then I you can subscribe. I also have a Patreon if you'd like to support me. And uh, thanks again, and I'll see you all next time. Bye.